Yahoo! Welcome, my beautiful brothers and sisters, to the Aquarian Adepts, my platform to become your spiritual server. And welcome, Aquarius Sun, Aquarius Moon, and Aquarius Rising. For anybody who's supposed to hang out with the Aquarian tribe, the innovators, the geniuses, let's be right, the aliens. <laughs> I don't even know what I just said. Um, anyways, yo. <laughs> oh, snap. Anyways, I'm having too much fun with this. Welcome, Aquarius Sun, Aquarius Moon, Aquarius Rising to your Scorpio Transit reading. I hope you all enjoy this. It's going to be a nine card spread where I draw two oracle cards, one of which is going to apply to all 12 signs, and the one that's going to be specific to each sign. Then I have seven other cards which correlates to each letter N, Scorpio. The first card, S, is going to be of the spirit and the soul, the message from spirit and soul. Second card, which is going to be the C, is going to be what's come to pass, what's needing to be transformed. The O is going to be the opportunity, what is possible, in many ways the Venus rising, what has risen. The R is going to be the rain, the dark nights, the nights where your emotions may get the best of you, you know, you the storms, but you'll be able to wait out those storms and find the rainbow. The P, the power, your resolve, your ability to make it through those nights, your ability to push through, to dance in the storm. The I is going to be inspiration, the insight that you receive from the transit, what you have learned. And the O is going to represent the outcome and or the results of the sun being in Scorpio. And of course, for you, Aquarius, this is going to be squaring your energy, so it may prove to be a challenging time for you because you may be in a bit more of your emotions than usual. And, you, you know, you typically are a little bit more detached, one of the more emotionally detached signs. But it's going to be proved to be a very, um, you know, a teaching time for you, a humbling time, but also a time for you to really, you know, transform in a very deep and powerful way. So, what do we have going on for you? Well, for all signs, we have Ascending the Mountain, which reads, Keep Going Forward. Hey, that's, my, that's part of my motto, Keep Moving Forward. And this is going to be an opportunity, of course, for you to keep moving forward, to climb this mountain. And it's interesting because the South Node, which has been in your sign for 18 months, will actually be going into Capricorn, your 12th house. During this transit, I'm pretty sure we'll be ingressing into Capricorn, which represents the mountain. That's also going to be your 12th house, so it's going to be a very karmic time for you. So you may find yourself wondering, wondering about your path and where you're supposed to go and trying to really figure out your life and stuff. But by then, this transit, Spirit is really going to be communicating to you this mountain that you are climbing, what you are overcoming, you know, what you are moving forward with. So, you know, it's okay. You know, Aquarius, I know it's a stubborn energy. All the fixed signs are stubborn, honestly. I've been telling a lot of the signs that. So it's good like this. I'm going to tell all the signs this, but this is going to be a month where there are going to be days where you feel really passionate and really want to move forward and really find the power. Other days, you're going to be feeling like you don't want to do shit. And it's going to be like the universe in some ways is going to be kind of dragging you on those days. So it may prove to be a little uncomfortable. But also, like I said, an opportunity for you to transform and to move forward and not to give up on yourself. Nothing wrong with being stubborn. There's a reason why that energy exists. But when you're too stubborn and you don't allow yourself to move and change, then, you know, things can get kind of icy. Things can get kind of, you know, stuck. But even ice, of course, as you can see in this world, does have its uses. And there's something wrong with... Like I said, when I think of ice, I'm thinking of like an iceberg and like the subconscious stuff like that. So there's a reason why it exists and those crystals exist. So there's nothing, like I said, wrong with being stubborn. But also, you know, thought out a little bit, Aquarius. Thought out. And a lot of times I'm going to tell that. You know, kind of thought out a bit. You know, there are going to be moments where you really want to just hold on and protect yourself and you're going to. And it's okay. But I'll also allow yourself to thaw out too during this. We're going to be moving forward. For the spirit and the soul, the card that we have, we have is the Five of Swords. And this is an interesting thing because you're probably going to be feeling like you're on the battlefield. Or you might even be feeling like 
You might even be feeling like things are going to come to an end, especially when this happened to leave your sign. But Mars will be in your sign too this month. So there are going to be people out there that might not necessarily understand what you're going through or may not understand why you're doing the things that you're doing, saying things that you're saying. And there may be some conflicts um, as far as communication where you felt like, you know, people are going to be taking your sword. People, you may feel like you're on the battlefield and other people, like there's this one person who's triumphing for, over everyone. You may even feel like a sense of injustice. You could be this person too, of course. But I think what Spirit and Soul is really trying to tell you is that, you know, there are going to be communication breakdowns. There are going to be miscommunications. And sometimes we can view it as people trying to hurt us or we can view it as that person is going through you know, their life experience. And we have to be able to hold space for them to transform on their own time. So some of you may make certain cuts uh, based off your relationships and stuff like that and how they transform um, because you want to protect your energy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is going to be a moment for you to really hold space for people and so they can work out their inner drama and their inner war, essentially. What's coming to past... Interesting, we have the Page of Cups here. So there's definitely going to be a transformation of the way that you... Did, that, oh, I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> it seemed like my camera moved there for a bit. There's going to be a transformation definitely as far as like you initiating, um, tapping into your intuitive side. And for some of you, what's coming to pass could be a relationship with a particular water sign, either as... Pisces, uh, Scorpio, or a Cancer, a relationship with a particular, if you happen to be in a relationship with a water sign, whether it's romantic friends or something like that, something about it, that relationship is coming to pass, whether it actually is like you cut yourself off from this person, or just the quality of that relationship is coming to pass, something is changing there, something is changing there. The opportunity that's rising, we have the Three of Pentacles, we have the Three of Pentacles, as the opportunity. What's possible is that you are really going to start to feel like you can work towards something. I like to think of the Three of Pentacles as like, you know, it, it's kind of like the lab card, which the lab card for me is the Eight of Pentacles when you're in the lab and you're really honing your craft. Three of Pentacles is when you are, you've already discovered your craft and you're kind of in, you're not in the rookie years of your craft. I'm thinking like sports analogies. You're not in the rookie year, but you're kind of like in the second, third, fourth year of working on your craft and you are getting better. So what the opportunity that's going to arise is that there's going to be an opportunity for you to really begin to work and even perfect your craft, something that you're working towards. An opportunity is going to rise for you to really work on that. The rain. We have the seven of pentacles in reverse, the dark nights. So the obstacles that are going to come this month are is going to be you looking at what you have manifested up to this point and what you have harvested and not really appreciating what you have harvested. So for you, I think gratitude is going to be very important because... It's going to be like, you may even change your actions so you can manifest more. And, you know, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you have to make changes where you need to make changes. But you're also, you may be, you know, kind of pre, or you may be kind of exposed to this vibration of ungratefulness um, for what you already have manifested in this moment. And just realize that you've, what you've done up to this point is in line with your destiny. It's in line with your truth. So sometimes we manifest things in our life that we just don't really understand why things are happening the way they are. We wish the situation might be different. We wish that things could be better or perceived better. But really, we are we are where we are for a reason. So embrace where you are in this moment, but also use that frustration that you feel as a propellant and as fuel for you to go and really work things out, work your magic, you know, don't just sit there and be upset about where you are, appreciate where you are, but use it as fuel to go get it, go get it, right? The power that you're going to be feeling, we have the sun card in reverse, and it's the card not that in reverse, but since it is squaring your energy, the sun, yeah, there's going to be definitely some interesting moments for you where you're going to feel some challenges, but honestly, this friction that comes from this squaring energy is what's going to bring you this beautiful miracle and this beautiful gifts, right? So the sun really here and the power is that you may at times feel like you are far away from the sun. In many ways, 
you kind of are the farthest from the sun. It's kind of interesting because Aquarius opposes the sun, right? Or Aquarius energy opposes Leo, which, you know, Leo rules the sun, Aquarius rules Uranus. But Uranus is not the farthest out planet. It's Pluto. But yet, ironically, uh, Uranus is, you know, which rules Aquarius, is opposite Leo. So in many ways, you kind of do feel like you're the furthest from the sun. In many ways, you kind of feel like you are the furthest from that life, from that warmth, from that passion. But this is going to give you, this month is going to give you an opportunity to realize that that power is within you. <laughs> right? That power is within you. That light is within you. You can radiate that love. You can radiate that light. You can be that beacon. You can be that sun. This is what happens. The, the thing that happens with Aquarius is that usually they're so out there. Since you guys are time travelers, people may not be ready for it. That's why people may gravitate towards Leo and it may frustrate you. But just know that you are carrying with you really advanced information and knowledge and wisdom. You really are, Aquarius. Not everyone's ready for it. That's okay. Shine your light anyways, Aquarius. Shine your light anyways. You will be feeling so powerful if you do that. The inspiration that you're going to be feeling, we have another page. We have the Page of Wands in reverse. We have a couple of reverse cards. But reverse cards, I like to think of them as planets in retrograde or in review period. An opportunity for you to review and make any alterations that you need to make. The page of wands here and the inspiration is that you are going to be feeling, you are going to get like this spark of creativity. And it may be, you may, it may come through the catalyst of being around a fire sign. So either an Aries or Leo or a Sagittarius, I'm feeling more Leo simply because it's your opposite sign. And of course, because the nodes will be shifting. So the page of wands is going to give you this opportunity for you to initiate a new project, maybe initiate a new relationship, initiate a new way of connecting to spirit and connecting to soul, a new way of seeing your day-to-day -day reality. It's almost like you're getting like this whole makeover on how you see things. Even though things may appear to be the same, you're going to be looking through the lens of joy. You're going to be looking through the lens of I'm a complicated joy. You're going to be looking through the lens of I got this. I don't care how far out there I am. I don't care how wacky and zany people may make me feel. I don't care how... I don't care if people don't necessarily understand the vibe that I'm trying to bring in here. I'm going to bring it in anyways. I'm going to initiate. I'm going to bring that forth. That's this. That's you're going to really be feeling inspired and in, like really inspired to take action during this 30 days. The outcome of this, we have the Knight of Wands. We have the Page of Wands and the Knight of Wands. The outcome is that you are really actually going to take this inspiration and you are going to act on it, and it's going to be very karmic. It may even feel just, it may even feel like it's not even a free will. It may just feel like fate, like it feels like it's just destiny. But you really are going to be acting on this inspiration that you feel. You really are Aquarius. It's like, and it's good because, like I said, with the south node in your sign, Mars having retrograde in your sign, of course, now it's out of shadow. I'm not sure if Mars will be in Pisces by the time this transit's over. I'm pretty sure it will be, which would be nice for you because even though you like, of course, Mars being in your sign and stuff like that. It's been pretty intense, of course, especially with the retrograde energies and this review period and stuff. So you really reviewing who, who you are, you know, and how you act on who you are and stuff and how your actions kind of represent in many ways who you are as well. But there's a deeper quality to that as well. So I think for you this month, you really are going to be acting on what you're inspired to do, what you've learned through all this. And how you don't have to view people as, per se, an enemy. And yeah, there are going to be times where we need to get on the battlefield and we need to slash. There are going to be times where we need to clap back. There are going to be times, of course, where you need to stand on your truth. And you may have to, you may have to, you know, you may have to cut some heads off. <laughs> like, I, I didn't want to say it, but I'm not, I, just, I, 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 I just honestly just couldn't. What about, maybe, you may feel like you have to cut some heads off. You may feel like you have to just be ruthless sometimes. But, you know, this is also giving an opportunity to really tap into your compassion. I think your level of compassion and empathy for people is going to transform too over this time. So that's what's actually going to allow you to really feel like you can really provide you know, your truth 
and your you know provide a platform to radiate your love and in a unique and innovative way that you uh, that only you really can do Aquarius. We all have Aquarius energy, but especially as Aquarius Sun, like you guys are just you guys are time travelers. You really are. So um, definitely a super powerful month for you. Let's see what else we have. We have Gates of Triumph. Wow, success expands in your life. You see how you're opening up the gates into the portal and the sun is just beaming there? This is really going to be an opportunity where you are just going to, you know, it's, it's, I'm kind of hearing it's me against the world. And I think it's like maybe there are going to be moments in this transit where you do feel like it's absolutely you against the world. But honestly, I feel like many of you begin to find your tribe this month, but it really begins by finding your inner tribe. The way that you find your tribe out here is by finding your tribe in here and I think really that's what you've been wanting, Chris. I really feel like that's what you've been wanting. So you are triumphed. You found your tribe. You're here. It's within you. Now it's going to start to manifest and really start to show itself in the external. Now it's really going to start to manifest. But when you act on this inspiration that you get, you are going to act on it. You are going to act on it. You're going to shine very brightly. Some of you may shine brightly than Leo's and it may piss them off, honestly. But it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just another way at looking at it. You know, it's the it's another way at look. Aquarius and Leo, you know, two sides of the same coin. Any energies that oppose each other, the two sides of the same coin. So it's just another way of radiating that love and that light, that passion, that joy. You are triumphing in a great way this month, Aquarius, and it does require you to kind of go through some things. It's going to, it's going to be challenging. It's going to require you to really. Be grateful for where you are right now. And also be grateful for even the frustration that you may feel right now. Because if you take that trans that frustration and you transmute it and use it as fuel to go get it, ain't nothing going to stop you. That is it for your reading, Aquarius. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And if you'd like a personal reading with me, beloved, you can follow the link in the description below, too. The Aquarian Adepts.com. And always remember, my beautiful brothers and sisters, to keep moving forward, to stay focused, and. Yahoo! Smile often. <laughs>